Asia has been undergoing considerable growth and playing a more significant role in the world economy. However, on the other side, a variety of environmental and social issues are also arising. The key to eliminating these problems and achieving world peace lies in the youth that will lead the next generation. The E.ON 1% Club has held many exchange activities in order to promote and improve friendship between Asian countries. One of those activities is Asia Youth Leaders Program. Asia Youth Leaders is a program where high school and university students who are future leaders from six Asian countries come together to discuss and propose to the host city government effective solutions to environmental and social issues. Through multilateral exchange, they learn from diversity of values, make lots of friends, and deepen the relationships between countries. Begun in 2010, the program has been held in many countries with varying themes such as biodiversity, water and economy, and air pollution. In 2015, a total of 117 high school and university students from six Asian countries came together in Tianjin, China. The theme for this event was waste management. The high school students considered the issue from a citizen perspective. Meanwhile, the university students took a government perspective. Through lectures, inspection, and team discussions, the participants learned diversity of value and developed proposals to improve and solve the current issues on waste management, which they then presented to the local government. On August 16th, the high school and university students from each country met each other for the first time. A reception was also held in order to welcome the students. Many guests of honor, including the vice mayor of Tianjin and representatives from the embassies of the participating countries in China, made time for the reception to meet and give words of encouragement to the students coming from their home countries. And then the high school and university students of Tianjin, as representatives of the host country, sang local songs and performed Chinese traditional musical instruments in order to welcome the participating members from the other five countries who traveled far. The first day of the program, the students were able to exchange views with their new companions and had an enjoyable time together. One of the objectives of the program is to have the students understand diversity of values. Many ice-breaking activities were held to help them remember their team members' faces and understand one another. First was a Tai Chi experience. They split into their teams and received the instructions. Each team then took turns showing their moves. This was their first step towards strengthening their teamwork. Next, the students learned to make Chinese dumplings. <laughs> and together, they enjoyed eating the hot and delicious dumplings. After getting to know more about each other, they began to work on the other objective of the program, which was to work towards a solution for Tianjin's waste management problems with high school students representing the perspective of the citizens and university students representing the perspective of the government. First, in order to deepen their understanding of Tianjin's waste problems, the participants attended lectures from experts in different fields. 
After each lecture, the students raised many questions to gain more knowledge of the issue. The first lecture was about China's domestic waste separation system. So I want to ask, how do you recycle electronic component? And the other one is, how do you dispose the any substance that containing chemical? The second was about policies of Tianjin City regarding its waste problems. Uh, my question is, I have heard about landfill mining technology that probably could be implemented. We could uh, find some more valuable waste in landfill site and probably we could do recycle and something like that. So, what your opinion about uh, landfill mining uh, technology to, that is it possible to be implemented in China, especially in Tianjin? So, thank you. I just mentioned that the simple dumping uh, just uh, cause a lot of serious environmental uh, uh, problems, especially uh, and uh, especially hazard maybe uh, harm to the human health. We just uh, push is to source classification, not classification in landfill yard, right? The third was a lecture about activities meant to expand environmentally friendly technology to corporations. How to do this? So, mm, well, I'm a little bit confused. So, those um, companies maybe uh, they have uh, they have to use uh, maybe hundreds of uh, employees to manage the um, waste. Isn't it a, a waste of human resources? Maybe uh, they can just put the waste to another intermediate um, company with the professional trained uh, workers who can maybe manage or separate waste. The some the recycle companies to send the employees go to the Toyota companies, how to Toyota make some the waste separation. But you know, the different industry have a different industry base. So separate, uh, separation is a different I think it's a very good suggestion. Uh, actually, I didn't know about. Uh, I didn't have much of much information about change city. Uh, I think it's very useful information, and I can use it. Utilize the uh, information in the, our, our program. Having gained knowledge of waste management issues, the participants split into high school and university students, and they went out to conduct observations and surveys from each perspective. Let's look first at the high school student group. The high school students went to a local shopping center to survey ordinary local people about their waste separation habits. Next, they went to inspect a new model of waste separation in the Sino-Singapore Tianjin Eco City. Afterwards, they visited a waste incineration plant. 那么我们肩负着天津市 近四分之一的市区垃圾的处理任务。There, they were able to see how tons of waste was being treated. Through these activities, the high school students became more aware of waste issues. Meanwhile, the university student group visited a landfill where garbage is being buried underground. There, they learned how waste is treated. Next, the university students visited the waste incineration plant. And the new garbage will be put and composted there for three to four days. After three to four days, and this equipment will take the garbage there into there, there are three main With things. a growing interest in waste issues, the university students went out on the streets to hear the voices of Tianjin citizens. Having learned about how Tianjin is currently dealing with its waste, visited waste-related facilities, and surveyed the citizens, our students have prepared well for the following discussion. 
Let's have a look at high school team C. They are discussing how they can help give a longer life to items that are no longer needed with the implementation of a flea market. The members participating from each country exchanged their ideas and sometimes were in disagreement with each other. However, they found that by accepting each other's opinions, they were able to improve their understanding of diversity of values. While it was just within a short time, by understanding one another, their bonds as a team were strengthened. The panel of judges for the presentations included a member of the Tianjin Municipal Government, an environmental studies expert, and a university professor from Thailand, teachers from a university and a high school in Tianjin, as well as a representative from a private corporation. Each team's presentation would be evaluated from a variety of perspectives. There were six high school teams and five university teams. Each team would give their presentation within about 10 minutes. First, the high school students' presentations. Team A suggested giving stickers to those who practice the three R's and waste separation and holding an exhibition of new Echo products. In, in the whole presentation, I saw a big focus on waste separation, but I don't see much of the waste reduction or waste reuse. Um, can, can you explain a little more? The prizes given for the competitions and for the games now, they will be from, re uh, from reused items. For example, like um, you know those necklaces made, made of newspaper, it's really colorful and I think it can really attract attention from the children. Team B proposed No Wasted Waste Week, a seven-day event held annually, focused on schools and companies. Team C suggested using advanced technologies and providing colored trash bins and educational posters in public areas. Team D proposed ideas of writing 3R songs to make it easy to remember and teaching kids to classify garbage. Team E suggested setting up an official media account of Echo Tianjin to spread the knowledge of waste management. Does anyone use WeChat? Team F proposed teaching junior and senior high school students about practicing the three R's and holding a poster design competition with a waste separation theme. Next, the university students took the stage for their presentations. Team G proposed education on waste separation and the introduction of a fee for a food waste plastic bag to reduce food waste. So do you think the policy you have suggested is easy to be applied in other provinces in China? We do know that this uh, program can be used uh, in all parts of China, in every city. Um, but uh, we have to say that there are really differences uh, between each city. So uh, maybe if we really want to re apply this program, we need to do some more research. Team H suggested that each town have one recycling center and the media be more active in spreading 3R concepts to raise people's awareness of environmental issues. Among many ideas that Team I proposed, most notable was the idea of minimizing the use of resources and sharing what is available in the local communities to educate them about environmental preservation. Team J suggested education about environmental issues for every age group and financial incentives for people who use biodegradable plastic bags. Team K proposed a system that introduced taxes and subsidies on garbage collection and recycling. They called it Collaboration Waste Management. Having listened to the presentations, the judges reviewed each presentation in order to judge and rank each one. The award ceremony was held right after the results were finalized.
Many guests of honor participated, including members of the Tianjin government. All the students perform at high level in terms of research, analysis, explanation, and summary. Finally, the results were announced. Now, who won the prestigious first prize in the high school section? The first prize winner of high school program for Asia is The high school team that shone as number one was Team A. Their projects of distributing 3Rs stickers and holding a public exhibition for the children to display their new Echo products were evaluated as very practical. Through these projects, the youth could practice the 3Rs, as well as raise awareness and call other people to action. Next was the announcement for the university student university section earned the prestigious first prize. Finally, our first prize winner of the University Program of Asia The spectacular winner of first place was Team I. Team I had proposed minimizing the use of resources and sharing what is available in the local communities. The judges highly valued the ideas as they encouraged each community to stand together with the government to solve the issues. The winners, Team A and Team I, submitted their campaign and policy proposals to the Tianjin Municipal Government. In return, the representative of the Tianjin government made a thank you speech to all the students. You have made good proposals today. We will pass all these sug suggestions to relevant department of Kenyan government. Thank you very much. Lasting for eight days, the Asia Youth Leaders Program came to the last event, the farewell party. It was time to say goodbye. However, to all the participants, it was not an end, but a beginning of a new future. As an expression of gratitude towards the hospitality of Tianjin students and government during the event, and in return for the welcome performance given by the host country China, the students from the other five participating countries performed traditional dances, which were greatly enjoyed by everybody. We, the Eon 1% Club Foundation, earnestly hope that through this program, these young people who will lead the future generation were able to learn about the cultures of other countries and expand their circles of friends to include people from other nations, which will in turn help bring peace to Asia.